the gospel this morning comes from Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 19 and 25 through 30. What comparison can I make with this generation? They are like children shouting to others as they sit in the marketplace. We piped you a tune, but you wouldn't dance. We sang you a dirge, but you wouldn't mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he is possessed. The chosen one comes eating and drinking, and they say, this one is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Wisdom will be vindicated by her own actions. Then Jesus prayed, Abba God, creator of heaven and earth, to you I offer praise for what you have hidden from the learned and the clever you have revealed to the youngest children. Yes, Allah, everything is as you want it to be. Jesus continued, everything has been handed over to me by Abba God. No one knows the Son, the only Son, except Abba God, and no one knows Abba God except the only Son, and those to whom the only Son wants to give that revelation. And I'll have Korah finish the rest. Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Thank you so much for sharing Cora and Derek and reading of the gospel. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from the triune God who leads us with mercy, holds us in purpose, and yearns for us to be fully alive. Amen. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are tired and weary. It's as if this scripture was handpicked for me. <laughs> Perhaps you're feeling the same. Come to me, all you who stayed up too late last night listening to fireworks. My goodness. Last night was rather exceptional. An exceptional display of enthusiasm well into the early morning. I think the last firework that I heard was 2 a.m. How about you, your neighborhood? <laughs> Jeez, maybe that's why we've got just a few less people. Not only is it a holiday weekend, but um, others might be sleeping in this morning to catch up on sleep. <laughs> Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary. Weary of all the things. I've got that in capitals, capital letters things that just make us emotionally and physically and spiritually exhausted. COVID-19 and physical distancing and political polarization and loneliness and grief and racial inequality and heartache. And the list goes on. Jesus said, come to me all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, the heavy burdens of loss of a job or fear for a future, not being understood, feeling out of control, or just depleted down to your bones. Jesus said, I will give you rest. Rest from Mary, who is tired of working full time, juggling the kids and also providing care for her aging parents. And then you add in COVID-19 and she is so weary. Rest for Evan, who has lost his job a couple of months ago and has been looking, but he has some physical limitations that keep him from accepting some of the jobs that have been offered. And so he's worried about his unemployment running out, paying rent next month, and he's carrying more than one heavy burden. Rest for Lydia who's not been thriving during the pandemic. The social, social isolation has cut her off from many of the healthy practices and relationships that historically kept her anxiety and her depression under control. She's been struggling this week and has had to call the crisis line a couple of times. Rest for you. What weariness or heavy burden are you carrying today? What might you release 
to God's good and gracious care. When Jesus speaks of rest this morning in Matthew 11, he's referencing more than just a nap or a quick getaway vacation. He's talking about Sabbath rest. Jesus is talking about holy rest. Within the Jewish tradition, it is referred to as sanctuary in time. Rabbi Abraham Heschel calls it a day of delight, a day to savor the world. It's being rather than doing. Sabbath, holy rest is designated time away with God to refrain from working or cleaning or producing or comparing or improving or consuming. Instead, it's a posture of just being fully present, trusting that you are enough and that you have enough. As Christians, we struggle with taking Sabbath rest. We live in a culture that is in a hyperspeed, even with a pandemic that is having us slow down, there is still this need. I, I've heard of so many people who are feeling this pressure that even as they are not going to work, they, um, and they're working from home and they maybe have more extra time, they should be learning a new language or they should be now doing some sort of self-improvement. They should have a six pack by the time we move to phase four. This is a product of overproduction and the complete opposite of that which sometimes will help us feel whole and grounded. Author Evelyn Underhill says that we spend our lives conjugating three verbs, to have, to want, and to do. But the essential verb is to be. Being restful means living in the present moment, not kind of regretting the past or feeling anxious about the future. Sabbath rest, holy rest offers space for needed release and also restoration. In biblical times, Sabbath rest was intended for everyone within society to rest. Sabbath was egalitarian in scope. Everyone was entitled to this gift of renewal. Think of laborers in the field. They would have time to rest their limbs. Indentured servants would be able to tend to their own needs for the day. Parents and children alike were invited to spend the day doing nothing, but that was actually something that was extremely life-giving because their whole focus was to give honor and praise to God. It's believed that Jesus was not being overly sentimental when he said these words, come to me all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. Instead, he was probably ad addressing those who were overworked and carrying heavy burdens. In first century Palestine, that group consists of, of poor people, low wage people who suffered from political and religious oppression. Who do you imagine Jesus is speaking these words to today? Yes, these words are absolutely for you. But who else needs to hear? Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. Is it a doctor or a nurse, a therapist at the hospital? An essential worker? A school administrator? A police officer? An artist? An activist? a mourning mother, a parent, so many around us know of someone who needs to be released of their heavy burdens and to find rest for their souls and their spirits. Barbara Cathorn Crafton wrote this small excerpt from her book, A Little Refreshment, A Little Comfort. She says this, prosperous people already know that they matter. They already are so secure in their human dignity that they usually don't give it much thought. It is the poor whose attempts to claim their own dignity, small 
but often so costly, costly need affirming. It is the poor and the weak who are most aware of the need for comfort and refreshment as all of us have. When things are going your way, it's easy to forget that you depend on God for everything you have. It's easy to begin thinking you don't, that your power resides in yourself. None of us are self-sufficient, however strong or weak or rich or poor we may be. We are all in need of comfort, in need of refreshment. Blessed are those who know their need of it early. They are the ones who will find themselves in the way of the comforter. Sabbath rests, holy rest, if practiced, infuses us with attention to the present moment. Poet Mary Oliver writes, I don't know exactly how to pray, but I knew, do know how to pay attention. Attending to the present moment is where God shows up. God's energy, God's peace, God's restoration, God's healing. Jesus encourages his listeners to take on his yoke. And Bobby, thank you so much for the visual this morning. In a literal sense, it is the cross, that wooden crossbar that connects two working animals together. But yoke was often referred to as the Torah or the law of Moses. But Jesus takes it an even further and he says, take my yoke upon you. Like my teachings, my way, my spirit, my love, learn from me. Like be so connected with me for I am jump gentle and humble in heart and you'll find rest for your souls. Again, we hear the word rest, Sabbath rest. Jesus makes the connection that being yoked with Jesus is not a burden, but it's a way to experience rest and a deep sense of purpose. To be yoked to Jesus speaks of our union with Jesus. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus is this way of life. And this union is where we find rest for our very lives. In a little bit investigating, I discovered that yoke has the same um, etymology as the word yoga, which in Sanskrit, Sanskrit actually means union. Jesus says, my yoke, or you could even say yoga, like my union is easy and my burden is light. The word easy is actually better translated as loving kindness. So you could hear this, this whole phrase as this, my, un my union is loving kindness and my burden is light. Being yoked to Christ is where we find not only our rest, but our deepest purpose. It's where we're made whole again, where we find forgiveness, where we find grounding, where we find our life, our breath, and our meaning, as Paul talks about. Being yoked to Christ, it's a transformative process. Our eyes, our pace, our ability to see the suffering of the world with eyes of compassion and curiosity, it deepens and it widens. We find ourselves not just taking care of ourselves and our spirit, but instead as we keep pace with Jesus, being yoked with Jesus is a form of discipleship. And in so we continue to find who we are and how we're being called to serve in the world. I am, am not a farmer. Um, and the only times I have been to a farm are when I would go and visit my uncle and cousins in Baker City. But I read recently that um, a good farmer, century, you know, hundreds, decades and decades ago, when they would have a yoke for oxen or for their cattle or working animals, they would fashion it to fit exactly the ox so that the, the animal would not be hurt and it could work longer amounts of time. And the author I was reading lifted up that, what does it mean that each one of us has our own specific yoke that we are tied to with Christ? that we each one of us has our own purpose. And some of us are called to be prophets and some of us are called to be teachers. And some of us are called to do just the simple task of caring for our neighbor through a time of crisis. And some of us are called to, 
to call people and connect like our yoke this way in which we follow jesus that we live out our union with jesus is particular to each one of us and it is good and it is holy and we need to bless all those who are called in their various vocations and their various callings but each one of us has that yoke and so when we receive this yoke from christ it actually is not a, a duty um, in a way that that brings about um it's just difficult but instead it's delight we find our greatest delight saint francis de sales he wrote an introduction to the devout life he said this the world sees that devout persons fast and pray and um, bear injuries patiently that they serve the sick and give to the poor and watch um, their anger and repress and stifle their passions. They just deprive themselves of pleasure and such actions and other kinds of actions that are hard and rigorous. But the world does not see the interior, the cordial devotion, which renders all these actions agreeable and sweet and easy. Today, Jesus calls us to holy rest like to just be with Jesus in breathing as Libby taught us the centering prayer and going for a walk, um, just being attentive to Jesus, following pace as we read about Jesus's life and we are in union with Christ. And then we discover then more and more what our calling is. Many years ago, I was so tired with ministry. Actually, I go through this often. If you would have asked me this week, Casey, how are you? I would have said, I am tired. So I am tired. But many years ago, I hit a spiritual tiredness and I called um, and I connected with a spiritual director named Karen Appleby. And as she worked with me, she discovered that really I was very uh, malnourished. And so my first few exercises were first to breathe. Like she taught me how to breathe with a deep sense of spirituality and connection with God. And then she taught me to walk and she created these walking paths throughout kind of Flagstaff, Arizona, where I would go and I would be attentive to how God is at work in the world. And then she taught me how to like rest, to put away my to-do list, to put away all of those, those um, shoulds that I would gather to myself as a pastor, that I'm supposed to do this, I'm supposed to do this, I'm supposed to do this. And she would pull those all away. And as I worked with her as a spiritual director, and I learned a little bit more about Sabbath rest, I actually discovered a little bit more as to what my, my deeper callings were. That I was really called to care for the world in tangible ways and to have a compassion that would not just be, oh, I'm so sorry you feel this, but to create active ways to serve in our neighborhood. That's after I worked with Karen Appleby, I joined a team that we helped create a homeless shelter in Flagstaff. But it was only through the rest and the renewal that I actually discovered more and more my purpose as deeply connected to Christ. There's so much more to talk about in this, but I do hope and pray that you this weekend um, and this week, you have moments of holy rest for renewal, but you continue to learn how Jesus is wanting to renew your purpose. And may it be an absolute delight as you are in full communion, full union with Christ. Amen. I invite you to, um, we're going to be sharing in a song. And if you would like, you are welcome to um, just type in um, one, how, what words or phrases are coming out in the midst of our service today? In what, in what way are you feeling God is calling you to respond? Is it to, to pray or read scripture or go for a walk or call a friend? Um, so feel free as you feel called. We will share in this time of a beautiful song, but you are also welcome to write some responses in the chat.